Okay. Guys, just a very quick video. This might be the worst video selfie in the world because I'm not looking at the screen, I'm just looking straight into the lens. And the screen's the other way around. Now, I'm stripping off this flat roof that we kind of inherited when we bought this property. And so what we've got is we've got a Firestone rubber straight over the roof behind me. And then um, what I've discovered now as I'm peeling it back is underneath was fiberglass. So they went to the trouble originally of stripping off the 1950s Stramit board, which for, for those of you who don't know is like a concrete and straw board, a couple of inches thick. And it sort of did two things. It was kind of strong and it gave you a little bit of insulation quality at the time. Um, that went out of the window years and years ago. I've never seen it or heard of it since um, I saw it when I was a lot younger, Stramit board. So now we've got a typical OSB TNG they put down, then they fiberglassed, and then they rubbered over that. Now the reason the rubber was put on was put on a lot, a lot of years after the fiberglass. The fiberglass that went on was probably state of the art at the time, and they thought they was gonna do something which was gonna last and everything else. But the trouble is, there's a lot of movement going on with a building which is primarily timber, and you've got like a steel ring beam. And I've discovered that just even on the joints of the chipboard, there's complete seams and cracks all the way through the fiberglass. So in, even though it's really strong, as I'm stripping it, for example, it's coming up in great big sheets and I can almost snap it. It's just got to be used in the right instance because it's really, really fashionable now. The systems that you can buy straight out of leading builders merchants, anyone can pretty much buy them and do them. So um, I would just probably say, a word of caution, if you're going to use a fiberglass material, make sure the substrate's right so you're using it on the right substrate because it actually I heard today from a specialist flat roof membrane supplier um, that this product, for example, uh, fiberglass can't be used on plywood. It's got to be used on OSB to give it some grip or something. So um, there's lots of issues around it. I'm a strong believer in single ply membranes because they offer air permeability. Um, and also they're flexible, they're amazing looking. So if I turn around here, so you can see in the, behind me, that is also a single ply membrane which looks a little bit like zinc. So I would just um, keep, you, I'll keep you informed, in between where I'm peeling off the rubber against the fiberglass, there's liquid, there's moisture, it's sticky, it's smelly. So um, yeah, I mean layering stuff on top of stuff has got to be um, done with caution. Um, but apart from that, We'll soon have this off, we'll rejoice it out and it will look the business and we'll put a really nice insulation over the top so it's going to be a warm roof, it's going to have late cut to falls insulation which is, so basically instead of having parallel thickness sheets of um, PIR, like 120 mil thick, this is going from 190 down to 150 say, and then down to 120 in the shallower points. So we're actually forming the fall in the uh, insulation. So I'll bring you a bit more of that as and when we do it. In the meantime, Thanks for watching.